pleasure to be here uh, for the conference and to introduce um, everyone to some of the great things going on in Lubbock, Texas related to innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, you mentioned that uh, my role is around uh, engagement. Um, I have about 14 years experience working in a university environment and launching deep technology companies. Um, I was recruited here a few years ago, and so um, we have been building an emerging uh, innovation ecosystem that helps to support entrepreneurs in a various uh, ways that we'll talk about today. Um, but we're really uh, excited about launching um, the Serif Hub Fuel Fund Ag Tech Fund. Um, and so um, we, we think that that's going to be a really great resource for a lot of the technology and the research and the innovation being um, done out here in West Texas. So happy to be here. Thank you for having us. Okay. Yeah, I'm excited to hear a little bit more about the fund. So I'm going to turn it over to you to tell us a little bit about the innovation of yeah, so everyone, um, I am um, leading the Innovation and Entrepreneurship uh, Initiative. And um, one of the things that um, obviously is a research thrust for Texas Tech University is agriculture. Um, and part of our, our research mission is to impact the region in which um, we serve. And so, um, as Billy alluded to, there are a lot of challenges, but part of what we bring to bear is the idea that we uh, think about these challenges and try to do research around them to come up with solutions that then um, can become uh, commercializable. Next slide, please. So just a little bit of history before I, I dive into um, some more uh, details about the resources we offer. Um, we um, started this effort in terms of supporting the region uh, in innovation and commercialization um, approximately six years ago. Uh, I came on board uh, April of 2016, but we uh, built a facility here um, where we house uh, technology companies such as GISC, and you'll be hearing from Agalala Greens shortly. Um, but um, we have been moving through the development of programming, which I'll, which I'll cover in just a moment. Uh, and then um, we've established recently a 501c3, um, a, a research park entity uh, that will enable us to um, have for-profit entities um, underneath its umbrella. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, when I dive into some of the details that are around our venture fund later in today's presentation. Um, and then finally, um, we did launch our first um, entirely external board meeting um, in spring of 2020. And why that's important is because we want the influences of the rest of the nation and um, thinking about competition and the marketplace and the things that we need to do to best serve um, our innovation and entrepreneur um, and our emerging sort of community uh, related to agriculture to be able to um, bring to bear experiences and things that we need to do um, to ramp up and be able to scale the region uh, as it relates to innovation and startups. Next slide, please. So this is just a quick snapshot of uh, some of the labs that were in, that are inside the innovation hub we are bsl2 um, this way uh, research can move from the main campus um, faculty and students can uh, establish and found companies and find a place um, that uh, can mimic uh, some of the sophisticated lab space that they have on campus this is one of our activator labs um, so we're able to um, meet the needs and scale with them um, with flexible office space. And you can see to the right, um, we have about 44,000 square foot of space. Um, we made a pretty significant investment in this um, in 2015. Um, this sits on about 50 or 60 acres and the research park board um, is gonna be catalytic in helping us to continue to develop the kind of spaces we need um, around this initial building. Next slide, please. Um, 
So to date, um, we have 21 companies that are considered tenants within the innovation hub, similar to GISC. Um, we really look to um, a deep uh, understanding of, of how we can help and support the growth of the kinds of companies that we support. Uh, so we have 43 trained industry mentors um, that help serve as what I would call a quasi advisory board to our startup companies as they go through our accelerator program. And I'll highlight that a little bit more in a moment. Um, we offer 12 different types of programming um, at the facility, um, and we work with our students, faculty, staff, as well as entrepreneurs in the community um, that want to be a part of our innovation ecosystem. Next slide, please. Um, to date, and, and remember, we are um, an emerging uh, startup community. Um, since 2017, um, our companies have received almost $35 million of investment, and we consider um, external investment like SBIR, STTR, as well as angel funding and venture capital funding. And so we believe we're off to a really great start. We've launched 24 startups to date. Uh, much of them have um, intellectual property that's been licensed to the startup that has um, been classified as a university spin out. Um, and we are um, really a hub for the entire region of West Texas. Um, we monitor um, the support that we give. And to date, we usually get about 15,000 people coming through our facility. Um, at least we were pre COVID. Um, we're about ready to open up. And uh, yesterday, when we launched our Ag Tech Fund, was the first uh, event. Uh, that we um, have hosted here in about a year. Next slide, please. So to talk real quickly about our programming, it really falls into three different types of buckets, ideation, commercialization, and acceleration. And very quickly, I'll describe the type of programs. I mentioned we do have 12. Uh, we are funded um, both by economic development organizations, the National Science Foundation, the Department of Commerce, and um, we look to best practices and to create best practices to have high impact deep technologies um, cycle through, iterate uh, and receive funding and get to market quickly. Um, our ideation programs really focus on building team, um, identifying individuals that are like-minded um, around a really good idea um, to inspire them uh, to, to really get connected into the commercialization programming and that's where people get a little bit more serious. We're a National Science Foundation i site and a node with uh, Texas A&M, Rice, uh, MD Anderson, and UT Austin. Um, so this means it's a high impact uh, team that works together on technologies that are coming out of the labs here at Texas Tech. Um, you usually will see a faculty member, a postdoc or a PhD student who will function as an entrepreneurial lead. Essentially what they're looking for is product market fit. Uh, we don't want to fund ideas that don't have one. And that's clearly um, one of the reasons that startups fail. Um, they're building something that folks don't think is a real problem out there. And um, we try to uncover that and iterate these technologies very, very early um, in the pre-accelerator phase. Um, and then we have our acceleration program. Um, Corey's going to talk a little bit about this. Um, this is different from a, a, a Techstars or a Y Combinator in that it's not venture backed, it's backed by the university. Um, however, um, we do have uh, best practices incorporated into this programming. It lasts for about a year. It's heavily mentored. Um, there's a team of mentors that work with each one of these, these teams that we identify competitively. Um, they receive a $25,000 grant. We don't take any equity in these companies. And essentially, we make sure that they actually have a business model in this process. We go through things like company formation development. Um, we make sure that we have the right CEO and founders in place um, that actually have the experiences to successfully scale. Um, we make sure that they have their minimal viable product, their first revenue. Um, they'll have office space or co-working space here. Um, and then essentially, will help them to prepare for their first round of investment. And we do that in multiple different ways, um, which I'll talk with you um, a little bit later in the presentation. Next slide, please. These are just a couple examples. Um, 
Um, why don't we go to the next slide? Um, uh, Enviro status, um, they are a, a classic example of the kind of PhD students, um, uh, deep technology um, that comes from the lab. This in particular model is um, the company's called Enviro status. It's a passive sampling company. Um, so they're um, interested in understanding um, how to um, evaluate water and the quality of water. Um, they're a technology company that reduces contaminants in water. Um, and so they successfully went through um, a series of our programming um, and have launched um, successfully in our last cohort. Would love to share with the, with the group um, uh, an exciting new program we're offering here at the Innovation Hub, and um, it's called the Sarah Pub Fuel Fund. Um, I mentioned it earlier. Um, this is a venture capital fund um, that will be backing ag tech startups, um, obviously to generate attractive returns. Um, next slide. This, um, the genesis for this uh, was um, a group of us um, went after a Department of Commerce grant um, to support rural resiliency. And um, this uh, EDA grant um, allows us to um, build the infrastructure for a venture capital fund. Um, and so before we could actually build the fund associated with the university, we had to take some really important uh, steps to develop um, entities that would allow um, some distance from the risk associated with it and the core mission of the institution. Um, that was no small undertaking. Uh, this was my reference to the Texas Tech Research Park. We formed a nonprofit so that we could form for profits, a holding company, and then the fund underneath of the, the, the LLC. Um, and so this fund launched yesterday. Uh, and so we're excited to share it with your, with your group. Um, um, it's literally hot off the presses. It is um, going to be focused on ag tech, as I mentioned, and the goal really is to be able to fund um, uh, anywhere from 25 to 35 um, ag tech companies over the next, I would say, year. Um, we've, we've, this is a seed fund that will be raising two to $10 million. We're likely going to be over were subscribed um, based on our, our initial meeting yesterday. Uh, people are very excited for this fund to exist um, in, in and especially in this, this vertical. Um, it's been a long, long time coming. And so I think people are really excited about it. So um, the deals uh, will be anywhere from 100 to 250,000, but we'll also want to um, have follow on uh, funds um, available to those companies we do invest in. What's interesting about this model, I think, is that um, we have uh, this thesis where we can invest 50% local and 50% can be syndicated across the nation. And this, th and we believe this is going to help us to do two things. Um, it's going to educate the local community and how to invest in in um, deep uh, technology companies here. And um, it allows us to see deal flow around the country, allows us to level up if we need to um, and get into, um, you know, sort of a sort of a more national um, exposure for the kinds of uh, investment we want to do, um, the kinds of deal flow we want to be exposed to. Um, there's no hard number here. The idea is to grow the investment community locally. And so we do want to dedicate some of that funding to our local startups, but we also do want to see um, what's out there um, in the rest of the nation. Next. These are the areas of focus. Um, by design, they're broad. Anything that touches ag um, will be something we will want to um, review uh, and, and participate in. Um, everything from, from food to logistics. Um, we have the National Wind Institute. We have the, fi the Fiber by Polymer Institute here. Um, there's lots of technologies being developed here at Texas Tech that cover a very broad range that in one way, shape or form touch agriculture um, here in West Texas and across the globe. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so I, I think I, what I would do is leave you with this. Um, we're really excited to be a part of the investment community. Um, one of the other unique 
things about the fund is that um, we have an administrative partner. Um, their name is Seraph. They will be um, uh, helping us to do the diligence. Um, they've run 10 funds across the nation. Um, they're very well networked and um, will help us to syndicate um, our deals as well as um, help us to identify and do the diligence that needs to be done on uh, those companies that we believe will give us the best return on our investment. Um, we're excited to partner with them. We're excited to partner with the, um, we have 10 local community partners in including GISC, um, uh, PCG, PCCA, uh, the City of Lubbock, the Lubbock Economic Development Alliance. Um, I think the big takeaway here for us is we are building community around um, you know, excellence related to research, innovation, and, um, and technology startups. And so um, we believe we're in it together. All right. Well, thanks very much. It's a lot of information. It looks like you've got a real uh, ecosystem you're building out there in West Texas. This is really exciting. And I wish you the best of luck. I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more from you. Um, well, with that, uh, I want to thank you panelists for being here, for presenting uh, about the, uh, the data cooperative, uh, the fund, uh, the innovation center, and, and also um, the, uh, the controlled environment ag startup. And with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and conclude the webinar at this point. Thank you very much.